This is Chris McDaniels. Like, subscribe. Subscribe to Team W Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris. And subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both of my TikToks. I'll be down there in the description box. And I'm here to do my AEW Dynamite. April 17th, 2024 reviews. So here we go discussing about tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. Now we kick off the show with the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, John Moxley. He comes out there and he was he starts talking in the ring. Uh, talking about, well, before he talks about the Don Callis family, he starts talking about the world title. So yeah, he was talking about how he's been chasing after the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship for at least five years and now how he's been going back and forth overseas, thousands of miles and all that stuff. And he says that's what he was trying, that's what he's been trying to accomplish, and he finally accomplished that goal. So yeah, that's what he says, and he says that he is now the new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Pretty good stuff. But then, after that, he was talking about the Don Callis family, how, pretty much how he got these issues with the Don Callis family and what they did to Brian Danielson and all that stuff for attacking him and all that. And he pretty much sends a message, pretty much sending a challenge. And he says that he wants to fight the biggest and baddest in the Don Callis family, and that is Powerhouse Hobbs. He says that he challenges Powerhouse Hobbs to a match next week in the main event of Dynamite. That's what he wants to do. And, yeah, he says that he knows Powerhouse Hobbs will accept, and he can't wait to fight him. So, yeah, that's what he says. And he says that Powerhouse Hobbs will know for sure that Don Callis is a liar and all that stuff. And when powerhouse Hobbs is in that ocean drowning and stuff and he's trying to get that referee to help him try to get, get Don Callis to help him nobody's going to help him so yeah that's what he was saying pretty good stuff but then after all that stuff we see Mercedes Monet talking uh, backstage and she was pretty much talking about the attack from last week on Dynamite where the lights went off and all that stuff and getting attacked and all that she says that it could have been Julia Hart and all that stuff but it could be somebody else uh to make sure that she don't go to double or nothing to go after that TBS championship. And she says that she don't care who wins at Dynasty. She says that she's still going to go after that title at double or nothing. So, yeah, that's what uh, Mercedes Monet said. But, yeah, up next, it'll be the first match of the night. It'll be the mixed tag team match. It will be uh, Adam Copeland and Will Nightingale versus Brody King and Julia Hart in a mixed tag team match up next on Dynamite. That'll be the first match of the night. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, now we get to the first match of the night. It was the TNT champion Adam Copeland and Willow Nightingale versus Brody King and Julia Hart in the House of Black in a mixed tag team match. So, yeah, Adam Copeland comes out there. But the issue is when Willow Nightingale's music starts playing, we see on the big screen that she apparently got attacked backstage. She is holding on to her neck and shoulder and all that stuff. Uh, you know, Stokely Hathaway and Chris Tatlander is checking on her, and she is not coming out. But then all of a sudden, the lights go out. It comes back on. Julia Hart is on the ramp. And then we see Brody King come up attacking Adam Copeland from behind. So it pretty much became a two-on-one handicap match. And Brody King was just beating the hell off Copeland a lot of times in this match. Copeland was trying to fight back during this match, but it was just, you know, Brody King dominating. And at one point, he actually put Adam Copeland in the corner, tried to hit that cannonball onto him, but Copeland moves out of the way, and uh, Brody King hits the turnbuckle as well. Then, Willow Nightingale comes running out there, and she gets on the apron, and she tags herself in. And then she comes in, hitting the crossbody onto Brody King and all that stuff at one point, and Julia Hart was not trying to get into that ring at all with uh, Willow Nightingale. And, yeah. Adam Copeland then hit the spear onto Brody King and all that stuff. And while the referee's checking on Brody King, we see uh, Willow Nightingale not paying attention. And then uh, Nightingale gets hit in the back of the head with, I guess it was like a chain from Julia Hart or something like that, getting knocked out. And she got knocked out. Copeland clotheslines uh, Brody over the top rope, and both of them goes over the top rope. And Julia Hart locks on her submission move. Heartless, obviously, Will Nightingale was already knocked out, so the referee rung the bell because, you know, passed out from the submission. So, yeah, uh, Brody King and Julia Hart defeated Adam Copeland and Will Nightingale tonight in a mixed tag team match. That's what happened. But then, after the match ended, Julia Hart was not letting go of that submission, and then Mercedes Monet comes walking down with the steel chair, chasing Julia Hart and Brody King out the ring, and, it, and Mercedes was staring at Will Nightingale where she had the chair in her hands, Copeland gets into the ring and 
Mercedes just drops a steel chair down and then shakes Coppola's hand and all that stuff. So yeah, that's what happened there. For the match and all that stuff, I'll give it all three and a half. I'll give it three stars. That's why I'll give it. it was decent. So yeah, that's why I'll give the match and all that. But then after all that stuff happened, we see Rene Paquette interviewing the AEW World Heavyweight Champion Samoa Joe backstage. And Samoa Joe was talking about uh, what happened last week with Swerve Strickland and all that stuff. And he says that he had this uh, the in fact uh, the world title and all that stuff because they don't know what person on uh, went to. You know. So yeah, that's what Samoa Joe was saying. But yeah, uh, Joe was talking about how Swerve Strickland will not win the world title because he's a choke artist, and anytime when he gets a title opportunity, he chokes at the end. So yeah, that's what he says. He says that he's going to be choking Swerve out at Dynasty, and he ain't going to get his hands on that world title. So yeah, that's what Samoa Joe says, and he says that he's going to submit his legacy as the greatest AEW World Heavyweight Champion in AEW history. So yeah. That's what Samoa Joe said. Pretty good promo from Joe right there. But yeah, still to come later on tonight, it'll be Claudio Castanoli versus uh, Will Ospreay 101. Definitely can't wait for that match. That match is going to be a freaking banger right there and much more. So yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. See you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on AEW Dynamite now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a segment that happened backstage. So yeah, when Dynamite came back on from commercial, we see a video package getting played of the Young Bucks and FTR's feud and all that stuff. And then the Young Bucks is telling Tony Khan to cut it because it is crap. So yeah, they said it sucks and all that stuff, so you tell them to cut it. And yeah, that's what happened there. And then uh, the Young Bucks was talking about how uh, how the elite is going to go out there and beat down Pac, Penta, and Daniel Garcia tonight, and that they are going to go to Dynasty, and Okada is going to retain his title, and that they are going to become the first ever three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions after defeating FTR in a ladder match. So yeah, that's what uh, they said. Yeah, we get to the next match of the night. It was. Matthew Nicholas Jackson, the Young Bucks, and the AEW Continental Champion, Kazuchika Okada, the Elite, versus Pac, Penta El Seto Miedo, and Daniel Garcia tonight in a six-man tag team match. So, yeah, we'll get to the six-man tag team match. In this match, it was a pretty good one. All three, all bo both of these teams, so was beating the hell out of each other and everything. At one point, Pac knocks down Okada, and he starts climbing up the top turbo car. I guess he was about to hit the black arrow, but then I think it was Nicholas that comes running up and knocks Pack off the top turnbuckle. Pack tags in Daniel Garcia, and that's when Garcia was a legal man against uh, Okada there, beating the hell out of him and all that stuff. But then, you know, Okada starts coming back a little bit. He starts beating down Garcia. He actually hits a tombstone power driver onto Garcia, and then Penta comes in, tries to hit the sling blade, but... Uh, Okada counters it, and he picks him up, and he hits a tombstone power driver on him as well, laying him out, and then Okada picks up Garcia, the Young Bucks comes in there hitting a double super kick onto Garcia, and then that's when Okada hits the Rainmaker onto Garcia, pinning him for the one, two, three, so yeah, the Elite defeated Pac, Penta El Sato Miedo, and Daniel Garcia tonight in a six-man tag team match, that's what happened, pretty good six-man tag match, but then after the match ended, uh, you know, the Bucks and Okada was not done with Garcia. So yeah, uh, the Bucks hit the EVP trigger onto Garcia, laying him out. They grabbed the ladder, bring in. They slammed him onto the ladder, started putting him in between the ladder. And then we see Nicholas climbing up the top turnbuckle, about to jump onto Garcia while he's in between the ladder. But then Pat quickly comes running in with the ring bell hammer and he chases the elite off. So yeah, that's what happened there. Good stuff. But yeah, for the match and what happened after the match, I'll give it all four stars. That's why I'll give it. It was a good match. So yeah, that's why I'll give it tonight's match. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, we get to the next segment of the night where we see uh, Taz, he's inside the ring, and uh, he introduces Chris Jericho and the FTW champion, Hook. So yeah, both of them comes out there, and uh, Jericho was talking about how he got Taz out here, and he wants to thank him for bringing Hook out, and Taz was like, no problem, and uh, yeah, Jericho was talking to Hook, and Jericho was talking about how he can put Hook underneath his learning tree because you know he taught so many people so many things over the years like 
MJF and so many other people. And he says that, you know, Hook gets the potential to become the World Heavyweight Champion and all that stuff if he's underneath Chris Jericho's learning tree. And he says, so what do you think, Hook? And Hook looks at him and he says, no. And Jericho was like, what do you mean no? And, uh, you know, Hook was like, I said no. And, you know, Taz is trying to intervene. And uh, Jericho was like, look, Taz, stop. And then uh, Hook is like, well, Jericho was like, look, you know, you're not as good as you think you are and all that stuff. And uh, Taz tried to intervene again, intervene again. And uh, Jericho's like, Taz, I already told you once, stop. And, you know, Jericho was like, look, uh, you know, you've been around so many people and all this stuff throughout the years, but they don't get you that damn good. He says that I can teach you how to get so good and you'll become a future world champion and all that stuff. And, you know, Taz try to talk to Jericho again. Jericho gets pissed off and he pushes Taz down. And Hook comes up to ta uh, Jericho and he puts him in the corner, grabbing him by the jacket and all that stuff. And he says that, you know, he told, he starts telling him, hey, get out the ring. Get out my ring because you ain't going to put your hands on my dad pretty much. So, yeah, that's what Hook was telling Jericho. And Jericho was like, Hook, come on, man. And, Jer and Hook was like, I already told you once, get out my ring. Uh, before there's some problems and Jericho actually gets out the ring. So yeah, that's what happened there. But yeah, up next, uh, well actually after that stuff, we actually see uh, Renee Paquette interviewing Swerve Strickland. Swerve Strickland was talking about how he got how he's been going through hell for like the past few months, getting like put in the coffin, getting hit with chains and all that stuff. And he says that you know this Sunday at Dynasty, he's going to walk out as the new World Heavyweight Champion. After he defeats Samoa Joe and all that stuff, because he says that he hasn't been staying down for those past few months and he ain't going to stay down at all this Sunday. So, yeah, that's what Swerve says, and he starts saying that it's his house. So, yeah, good stuff right there from Swerve. And he says that he'll meet Samoa Joe face to face later on tonight. But, yeah, up next, it'll be Mariah May versus Deanna Perrazzo. One on one up next on Dynamite. See that matches up next and still to come later on tonight. We'll see Claudio Castanoli versus Will Ospreay one on one tonight. And we'll be seeing much more. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, we get to the next match of the night. It was. Mariah May with the AEW Women's World Champion Tony Storm and Luther at ringside versus Deanna Perrazzo 101. So yeah, Mariah May versus Deanna Perrazzo 101. This match, it was a pretty good match. Deanna was going after Mariah's arm majority of the time in this match, going after it. And then we started getting towards the ending of this match where we see Mariah May pick up uh, Deanna Perrazzo up on her shoulders, trying to hit May Day onto her, but... Uh, Deanna Perrazzo, uh, you know, tries to reverse it, but Mariah May sits on her getting a pin, but, uh, Deanna Perrazzo rolls her back through after getting pinned for, like, a two count, and Deanna Perrazzo pinned Mariah May for the three count. So, yeah, Deanna Perrazzo defeated Mariah May tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match, that's what happened, but then after the match ended, Mariah May and Timeless Tony Storm starts attacking Deanna Perrazzo inside the ring, beating her down and all that stuff. But then we see Thunder Rosa come running down, knocking down Luther outside of the ring. She gets inside the ring, chasing off Tony Storm and uh, Mariah May. And then uh, we see Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo getting face to face. Deanna pushes her. Thunder pushes her as well. But then Deanna Perrazzo got dragged out the ring by Mariah May, and both of them was going at it and all that stuff. And then we see. Uh, Thunder Rosa and uh, Tony Storm going at it, and then Thunder Rosa actually got the upper hand laying out. Tony Storm got on top of her and then, like, grabbed some lipstick and starts pretty much smearing it all over her face like the, the Joker. So, yeah, uh, that's what happened there for the match. What happened after the match, I'll give it all three stars. That's why I'll give it. It was a decent little match between Deanna Perrazzo and Mariah May. Good stuff. But, yeah, that's what happened there. But then after the match ended, we see Mar uh, Renee Paquette interviewing uh, Jay White and the Guns, Bullet Club Gold, and Jay White and them tells the acclaim that they want that they're going to see him this Sunday at Dynasty, and it's going to be a six-man tag team match for the AEW Trios tag team titles and the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles. So yeah, winner takes all match this Sunday at Dynasty. So yeah, that's the match that I got set up. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite. Now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a segment that happened backstage. So, yeah, we see the AEW trios, ta six, uh, trios Tag 
Team Champions, the acclaimed. So yeah, Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, and Billy Gunn. And yeah, they pretty much accepted uh, Bullet Club Gold's challenge at Dynasty. So on the zero hour, it'll be the acclaimed versus Bullet Club Gold in a winner-take-all match for both titles. So yeah, that's the match I got set. But then after that, we get to the next match of the night. It was Orange Cassidy versus Shane Taylor with Lee Moriarty and Anthony Agogo. Shane Taylor Promotions at ringside. So yeah, we get to this match. This match, it was a pretty good match between uh, Cassidy and Taylor. Uh, both guys beating the hell out of each other. And then uh, at one point, Cassidy tries to lift up Shane Taylor for beach break. But, you know, um, Taylor's just too damn big. And he pushed him away. And then we see uh, Orange Cassidy hit the orange punch onto Shane Taylor, but Shane Taylor was not going down, so uh, Shane Taylor punches him right back with the left hook, and then Orange Cassidy comes back with another orange punch onto him, and then he pins him for the one, two, three. So yeah, Orange Cassidy defeated Shane Taylor tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match, but then after the match ended, we see Lee Moriarty and Anthony Agogo go in there in the ring, and they start beating the hell out of Cassidy. Anthony Agogo punching him in the chest and all that stuff, laying him out, and then we see Christopher Daniels and uh, Matt Sydal try to come running down to make the save, but then all of a sudden, a uh, guy in a hoodie pretty much comes up and hits Daniels upside the head with the chair, and same for Matt Sydal laying them both out, and it was Trent Beretta. So yeah, Trent Beretta standing there, and he tells Shane Taylor Promotions that hey, go ahead and beat him down, and uh, you know they lift him back up. Shane Taylor punches him with a right hook, laying him out, and then they uh, pretty much beat the hell out of him, and they uh, put the Shane Taylor Promotions flag on top of uh, Orange Cassidy laid out. So, yeah, that's what happened there. For that match and all that stuff, I'll give it three and a half stars. That's why I'll give it. It was good stuff. But, yeah, that's what happened there. The match was. But, yeah, uh, up next will be the main event. It will be Claudio Castanoli versus Will Ospreay. One-on-one -on -one up next in the main event for tonight's Dynamite. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing to happen on AEW Dynamite, we get to the main event match. So, yeah, we, it was Will Ospreay versus Claudio Castanoli 1-1. One -on Don Callis was on commentary for this match. And this match was an absolute banger, easily match of the night right here. Uh, both of these guys beating the hell out of each other and all that stuff. At one point, Will Ospreay springboard off the second rope, try to hit that cutter, but Claudio catches him up on his shoulders and pretty much uh, flips him like a pretty much like a backwards attitude adjustment so yeah that's what he does and he only got a two count out of it and then he tries to hit the uh swing onto uh will osprey but osprey quickly pulled him up pulled himself up and hits a nice ddt onto claudio and then he climbs up the top turnbuckle and jumps off with that twisting corkscrew splash type move onto claudio he pins him one two claudio barely kicks out at two osprey goes to the corner waiting for Claudio to get, back, to get back up to his knees, and then he hits the hidden blade onto him, and then he pins him for the one, two, three. So yeah, Will Ospreay defeated Claudio Castanoli tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. That's what happened. Great match right there. But then, after the match ended, Will Ospreay was not paying attention. He walks out the ring, and then we see Kanosuke Takeshita, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Kyle Fletcher get into the ring, attacking Claudio after the match. And then John Moxley comes out, and he's going at it with Powerhouse Hobbs and all of them inside the ring. And yeah, uh, John Moxley and Claudio Castanoli standing tall in the ring, and Don Callis family outside of the ring. And Will Ospreay was not happy, and you know, he's arguing with the Don Callis family. So yeah, that's what happened there. Uh, good match, great match right there. And what happened after the match was pretty good. I'll give all that stuff uh, four stars. That's why I'll give it great match and stuff. So, yeah, that's why I'll give the match. But, yeah, up next, we're going to be seeing Swerve Strickland up next on Dynamite and see what he got to say up next. So, yeah, it looks like uh, that's going to be the last segment of the night up next. And, yeah, uh, good stuff. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on AEW Dynamite. See you guys later. Until then. So the next thing that happened on AEW Dynamite, we get to the final segment of the night. It was Swerve Strickland. He comes out there with Prince Nana. He gets out to the ring and pretty much he's calling out Samoa Joe because 
he says that, you know, that he wants to see him face to face and all that stuff before Dynasty this Sunday, where he takes away his AEW World Heavyweight Championship from him. So, yeah, that's what Swerve Strickland was saying. And then Samoa Joe starts coming out there, but a bunch of security guards is holding him back and all that stuff. And Swerve is like, no, 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 let him go so I can beat his fat ass and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's what Swerve was saying. And, you know, Joe was getting held back by a bunch of security guards. And then we see Swerve climb up the top turnbuckle and jumps off with a Swerve stump onto all the security guards laying him out. He gets face-to-face -face with Joe, and then he says that he's going to take away that world title from him. And then both of them starts brawling outside the ring, going at it and stuff. And then Joe throws him to the still steps, throws him back into the ring. Prince Nana is checking on uh, Swerve, and then we see Samoa Joe behind him doing... Prince Nana's dance and all that stuff and then he starts uh, walking up to Prince Nana and then that's when Swerve comes up going at it with Joe again. He has the house call onto him and then he climbs up the top turnbuckle trying to hit, uh, about to jump off with the Swerve stump but then Joe quickly got back up knocking Swerve pretty much sweeping his legs from underneath him and stuff and then he headbutts him, grabs him picks him up and then he hits uh, the Muscle Buster onto him, laying him out, and then he grabs the AEW World Envoy Championship and, and holding it up high. So yeah, that was the end of Dynamite right there. For match of the night, I gotta say it was Claudio Castanoli versus Will Ospreay. That match was a really good one there. Uh, so yeah, that was match of the night. For the go-home show for uh, Dynamite, I'll give it... I'll give it eight and a half stars as well. It was a good episode. Not bad. It was better than last week's for sure. But, yeah, that's why I'll give tonight's episode. But, yeah, that has been my AEW Dynamite uh, reviews. Like, subscribe. Subscribe to Team W Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris. And subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both of my TikToks. I'll be down there in the description box. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later for this Friday's Friday Night Smackdown reviews. And I'll be doing my AEW Dynasty reviews this Sunday, so yeah, look out for that, and I'll probably have my predictions up for it, I guess. Maybe tomorrow. I'll see. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then.